hook punches. Interesting punch in my opinion. It's interesting because it's got blessings and curses, right? Benefits, problems. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> It comes from an unusual angle. It's not a straight punch. It comes from an unusual angle, sideways, right? So, I should probably take this off for the first example. The unusual angle is the benefit. It's a lot like the deception that happens in karate kicks. We add extra steps, it reduces its power, but we hit somebody clean, unlocked, and because we're able to hit them clean, unlocked, the result is a knockout, right? Hook punch is kind of that way. It has a different line which it enters and hits the destination. The downside. The downsides are a lot. The little knuckle. It's easy to hit somebody in the head with the little knuckle. And the whole idea is to deliver knockout trauma. Trauma that's going to break something. But now with your strike and there's a, a fist or a foot or a knee or an elbow striking somebody else's body, the weakest link in that trauma, the weakest link loses. It's kind of like a semi-truck versus your Volkswagen bug. It's a head-on collision, but the weakest link gets all the damage. The semi-truck doesn't look like anything's happened and the beetle is you know, over the cliff. Same thing, we want to hit hard. However, the little knuckle, it's hard to get that little knuckle so it's not in the lead. So here's the rule. If what I'm hitting is out in space, you can have your wrist sideways. Because the big knuckles, what I want to hit with, are going to hit the destination in this alignment, in this arrangement. Right? But if he's in close and I want to throw a hook, if I put my knuckles this way, the little knuckle tends to be in the lead. And then I deliver trauma, my little knuckle breaks, and now I got a broken hand, I got to deal with this self defense situation or this fight now with a broken hand. That's a hard thing to deal with. So as we get closer, the hand changes to vertical alignment. As the target gets farther away, you can change it to a horizontal alignment because the whole idea of the wrist position is based on the distance that the trauma is going to happen. I want my big knuckles. Here's the next issue with the hook punch, the wrist. It's easy to sprain your wrist. And if you've done kickboxing combos and throw on the hook, you're like, yeah, every so often I get a stinger in my wrist. It's like, yeah. And every so often it's worse. It's a full on sprain because you're delivering trauma and the wrist is now the weak link based on the angle that you hit. Next, the elbow. The elbow is the next weak link. I want the fist, wrist, elbow on the same plane behind the line of force, same plane. I don't want wrist, high, elbow, low traveling on different planes, right? This is gonna be bad for the wrist, bad for the elbow. So I need to lift the wrist. I see a lot of people punch this way, but you gotta lift the wrist. Next, the shoulder. The shoulder is the next joint that takes all the trauma. So people make a living doing hook punches. They're always in rehab for bad shoulders and they always had a bunch of shoulder surgeries. Because as I'm delivering force out away from my body, it ends up transferring all that load and force into the shoulder joint. So it's got lots of problems, however, we cannot neglect the hook punch because the benefits are definitely there, right? So here's the idea of the hook punch. We're in this position, I'm gonna throw a left or a front hand hook. Body weight transfer. Look at my back leg, step off to the side, step. I step off to the side because now I can bring my body weight that way. A lot like we did earlier with the, with the round kick. Then my hips rotate and arm loads. The hips pull, the arms loaded, the fist is in alignment, tight wrist, Elbows on the same plane. Hips go through and then my trunk and my shoulder pull through and play catch up. <coughs> they play catch up. It's not all one unit. It's not this way. It's step, load, hip transfer, heel rise, and then play catch up. Does that make sense? The hook punch. You can also do a hook with the back hand. Same idea. Step off, hip rotation, and play catch up. That's the mechanics of the hook punch. That's the punch of the day. So we're gonna start with the clapper mitts. Since John's gonna hold it, and I'm gonna come in, try to work on my mechanics. I can work either side. Left, right, left, right. Notice the chambered hand. This hand. It does not come down, it stays there. Bang! 
it stays covered. Over time, the human population has developed differently than other species to be superior, right? One is intellect. We can outthink other animals, right? Aha, we're at the top of the food chain. Next, we can throw. I thought, throw? That's an interesting little nuance to analyze. Humans can throw better than any other species. We figured out how to throw spears better than other animals, right? Better at hunting. So the ability to throw is unique. So if you look at like a baseball pitcher, what do they do, right? They wind up, they have body weight transfer, they have hip rotation, the elbow leads, they follow through, wrist flick, and they got this whole kinetic chain of events that involves body weight transfer and throwing. And then we look at striking. And when we want you to punch, we say throw the hook, throw the cross, throw the jab. We're like, throw. I'm like, light bulb, we're throwing punches. So if we can connect the dots like people throw balls and we can model our punches in a similar way, I want to do the hook punch, it's a lot like throwing. I'm transferring body weight, I got my hip rotation, I got my wind up, I got the stretch of the muscles, I got the, the muscles playing catch up, and all of a sudden it's a lot like a throw in, in a lot of respects, except it's a strike instead of a ball. So combos that offer the hook punch, combo number three, number four, number five. If you hold for three, and I'm in this position, a couple things, jab, weight transfer cross, weight transfer, Hip, then elbow, then wrist, right? Then I'm gonna do my kick, number three. So, when we throw the hook, we want the elbow high following. We wanna make sure the wrist is in the correct position. We wanna squeeze our hand tightly, make sure that we don't have any uh, sprain in the wrist. I want weight transfer, hip rotation. I want all those things to happen on three. Now we do number four, jab, cross, there's the hook, and then back leg, oh, I'm sorry, four, one more time, let's do four again. Jab, cross, hook, and then cross, and then switch, round kick. Then we have five, five is just like four. Double jab, cross, here comes the technique of the day, the hook, cross, skip, and kick. Let's progress all the way to eight for just discussion purposes. Remember, the technique of the day is the hook. So eight, we have double jab, then a duck. Look at the load. Transfer body weight, there's the hook, cross, hook, and then of course kick, yeah. So again, eight, look at the way the duck is negotiated to set up the hook. Double jab, duck, transferring body weight onto this leg so that I can drop and deliver body weight back, right? And I'm over-exaggerating, but it would look something like that, right? Double jab, duck, and then load the hook, cross, and then come back, hook again, kick. So you don't just duck down and up, you duck and you load the hook so you can deliver body weight transfer. Final thought, we talk about the cover in the midst of punching, would you hold for number two? And we do one, everybody's good, one, this hand stays up nice. We do two, boom, boom, people are good. As soon as you get to the hook punch, here's what happens. Three, boom, boom, hook punch. See the hand at the hip? The hook punch is the one everybody tends to neglect the cover. So bonk yourself in the head every time you hit the target. If I do three, boom, 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 I'm bonking so that I make sure I have the cover. Because the hook is where the cover tends to drop. If it's five, double jab, cross, hook, cross, hands are up in the midst of the combo. And then let's throw the kicks. Any questions? All right, technique of the day is the hook. All right, let's talk a little about defense. I think sometimes we have trouble uh, at our dojo with uh, having our hands up in the midst of our combo simply because we're hitting pads and then somebody else is not hitting us. We're practicing only one half of the equation. So, can you guys get scooch over a touch? All right. So we're going to be at a distance that I can hit him, which means. We're at a distance where he can hit me, right? So if I extend my backhand and you extend your backhand. All right, there's our distance. Here's where we're at, we're at when we're hitting each other, right? So now, if I'm like, and he just does a jab, see my problem? So I'm gonna throw my hook, I got my hand up, right? 
So my hand is up and I hit him and then I'm covering. My hands are up. So here's the distance that we're going to interact with. We're going to just talk a little defense. So now, I don't want to do the karate defense of moving and circling and creating space simply because we're not in the art of karate and we want to be good at close range combatives. And here we are, we're in punching range, which is a fairly close range. Now, I want to be able to hit him and if I create space, I cannot hit him. So I, we're going to hit each other. However, I want the good hits and I want him to have the bad ones. So when, since the Arvin starts to strike, do you see what, just for a second, right now I can see him right through this window, right? I'm looking right through the window. I can see him direct. If he throws a jab right in the window, boom, right? Go ahead, right through the window. Boom, there it is, right in the window. So now watch. If I turn, do you see how my lead hand now is a center line wedge? He throws the jab and it hits. And so one idea is to simply have rotation with my upper body. Right? He throws the jab and I just turn and I let him hit the fort instead of shooting right between the windows. The other idea is I can move my head. Right? I can have a little head movement and then I'm in range to hit him, but I didn't retreat. So here's the drill. Since the Arvind will work on his defense and I'm just lightly going to be working my combos. There's combo one. There's combo two. There's combo three. And what he's going to be doing is absorbing shots that are glancing blows. He wants them to be glancing blows. I get to hit him 50% effectiveness. He's gonna be in range and he's gonna hit me 100% effectiveness. Does that make sense? He's not trying to avoid, he wants to stay in play. He just wants to make sure that when I hit him, he's moving in a, in a way that's shielding, taking center line and not absorbing big punches.